Relations. So she worked on Capitol Hill, and now she's a lobbyist for um, Animal Welfare Institute, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, I expect every one of you to have questions to ask her, because her life is fascinating. We <laughs> could only <laughs> wish. <laughs> no, it is. We can only wish that our lives are so fascinating. But, so oh, without further ado. So, huge round of applause for you guys getting me out of work today. Awesome. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> yesterday from DC. Um, I'm a lobbyist now, Animal Welfare Institute, so I work on things like ending horse slaughter for human consumption, um, shark conservation, whale conservation, wildlife protection, ending puppy mills, all the way down the line. So that's what I do now. Um, I wanted to talk to you guys because I am from Plano. And I took government back in 98, 99, and thought it was the most boring thing ever. I fell asleep on my they desk. Would, they would never say that. <laughs> I mean, they would never say that, because you're an awesome teacher, but whoever I had it was terrible. I thought it was boring. Anyway, it was boring to me. I'm like, old white hair guys on Capitol Hill, and why in the world do I care about what they're doing? So I thought I was going to be a veterinarian. I went to school to be a vet, um, ended up getting an internship, and changed the course of my career. So. I wanted to come back today and talk to you guys about how cool government can be if you get involved in the process um, and kind of bring it to life. So my background a little bit, Plano Senior High graduated in 99. Um, so I actually had classes in this classroom back when this was Shepton. This was my English class. Texas A&M, graduated animal science degree um, from there. And then I had a semester between vet school and my undergraduate work. So I took that semester to intern in D.C. And by doing that through the university, I got a stipend, which paid for my rent at the time, which is really cool because we were talking about last class, my first apartment was 600 square feet. Um, it was in a basement. I paid $1,250 a month to live there. So I think the apartments over at Legacy, which are supposed to be like the nice apartments, are only like, what, $700 a month. So yeah. And then I worked on the Committee for Energy and Commerce, which they handle things like health care, Commerce, energy, obviously, telecom legislation, all kinds of cool stuff. Then I worked for Pete for about four years. Um, I held every title in his office except for legislative director and chief of staff. So started off as intern in his office, loved it so much, ended up coming back as staff, was legislative correspondent. So I would be the person writing you back if you had you know, questions or wrote a letter to your congressman, I would write you back. Um, ended up working as legislative assistant, handling agriculture and animal welfare issues for him because my background was animal science. Um, I was scheduler for him, which means I handled his schedule, told him where to be, what to do, which is awesome. Um, and then I was intern coordinator with him as well. He brings up like 100 plus interns every summer, loves um, teaching kids. So if you ever want to intern, let me know and I can help hook you up with his program. And then also, congressional offices only have about eight staffers, which handle everything and cover everything for this basically little business on the Hill. So I also did the computer technology stuff for him, which means I fixed everyone's Blackberry. Imagine getting a call from a congressman's <laughs> wife at one in the morning saying, I dropped my phone in the toilet, and I don't know what to do. Like, what am I supposed to do? I'm in D.C. You're a So you have to figure it out. You have to call people, get a new phone shipped to her house, whatever, program it. Oh, so much stuff. Anyway, I went into business for a little bit um, and made a lot more money than I do now, but I wasn't changing the world. I didn't feel like I was involved in the process, and it was just unfulfilling. So I went back to D.C., and now I lobby for animal stuff. I'm a lobbyist now. You guys have heard the term lobbyist, yes. Um, and I'm probably associated with some kind of negative connotation. You always hear about <coughs> lobbyists bribing people or sleeping with someone or, you know, ending up in court or whatever, right? So. This is something that everybody thinks about lobbyists. All lobbyists are bad people. But there are two different types of lobbyists. People who lobby for companies like the tobacco industry or whatever you think is you know, not good. Um, and then people like me who lobby for uh, nonprofit associations. So I work on animal welfare policy. There are people who work to find a cure for cancer fund, you know, and, and try to get funding. So people lobby on all kinds of different things. I don't have an MD or law degree. I have a bachelor's in kicking butt and taking names. I get paid to talk. What do you talk about? I speak on behalf of cigarettes. My mommy says cigarettes kill. Now, is your mommy a doctor? No. Well, she doesn't exactly sound like a credible expert now, does she? Yeah. We call ourselves the Mod Squad. M-O-D. Merchants of Death. We're lobbyists for the tobacco, 
alcohol, and firearms industries. How many alcohol-related deaths a year? Well, is that a thousand? That's what, 270 uh, a day? A tragedy. I front an organization that kills 1,200 people a day. Really? The number one killer in America is cholesterol, and here comes Senator Finister, who's clogging the nation's arteries with Vermont cheddar cheese. The great state of Vermont will not apologize for its cheese. What happens when you're wrong? See, Joy, that's the beauty of argument, is if you argue correctly, you're never wrong. Yeah, so that's what we're up against. Industry lobbyists that come with a huge chunk of change. So they all have these things called political action committees that are associated with their company, and they fund congressional campaigns. So me, as an animal welfare lobbyist, I don't have a PAC, and I'm not giving any congressmen money. So when I go and talk to them and say, hey, will you pass this bill? I'm just asking them to do the right thing. So anyway, I wanted to show you guys kind of inside DC, kind of bring it to life. So last year, um, my intern Annie and I made a couple of videos for you. I have rules. Yes, um, no pictures in the halls or the stairs, otherwise in the rooms is fine. I'm your guide, Barbara Sirota, Senator Robert Byrd, BYRD of West So that's what the Hill looks like. So I worked in the House side. In the Senate side, they're a little bit more curmudgeonous and stoic and, you know, regal, and they literally are, you know, more formal. They, you know, staffers wear suits every day. They're always, you know, structured appropriately. On the house side, we have a joke. So we worked in, you know, like the Longworth House Office Building, so we just call it Longworth HOB. On the Senate side, um, we would just commonly refer to them as SOBs, Senate Office Buildings. Sure. <laughs> so that's our little joke. You might hear that sometime on the hill. So right now, who's heard of the lame duck session? Raise your hand. Anybody? A couple of you? So the lame duck session is something that happens between um, a new Congress coming in and the election. Um, my intern Erica this year is so cute. She just graduated from University of Connecticut, and she's waiting to go to law school. So she's with me for a year. So she got out of the office and um, made this video for you guys to show you a little bit about um, what's going on right now on the Hill. Lame duck is likely to be, well, lame. 